I'm Ashlena Johnson and this is my story. I'm 26 years old. I'm married to my best friend. I have a cute two and a half year old, but just I love a little boy. And then I get to teach fifth grade. I was diagnosed a little over a year ago with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I had a tumor that was pushing on my sympathetic nerve and was causing some symptoms that I just didn't know what was going on and that's what they ended up diagnosing me with. Within a month I had started chemotherapy, within a month and a half I had lost all of my hair and was on some very intense medication that made me sick and didn't have energy and bloated and swollen and all kinds of different symptoms. And from there I did treatment for about six and a half months. And then my last scan came back clean, and so now I'm just working toward getting my energy back and feeling healthy again and feeling like myself. So first of all, the one thing with chemo that I wasn't fully aware of is it gets worse as you go on. So like the first few times I was like, oh, I just feel like I have the flu. And then I continued to feel more and more sick to the point where I couldn't carry my son up the stairs or I didn't have the energy to like, I'd teach during the day and then I'd come home and just sleep or I wouldn't be able to go on family outings because I just did not have the energy to do that. Um, with losing my hair, I will be honest, that was part I was most scared about when I first found out. Because I identified with my hair, that was like the one thing I felt like I had going for me on the days when I was like, oh, I don't feel like this fits quite right, but oh, my hair looks really good. So I, I was really scared about that, and as it began, began thinning, I would say emotionally that was like the hardest part for me. I was losing my hair and then the night that I shaved it was a chemo weekend so I was already sick and I was throwing up as people were trying to shave my head and get it off because it had fallen out so much that it didn't even look good anymore. And but then all of a sudden I was bald and it was done. I had done it. <laughs> like this big bad elephant that was coming my way. I had conquered it like I was then bald and I had to get used to seeing myself that way and it was incredible. That all of a sudden it wasn't it was like I'm gonna live like I'm gonna be okay with a bald head like I'm gonna make it I can still go out in public people will still love me even though something I identified with and I felt like was me is gone my husband still loved me my son I was so worried because I was like oh my gosh he's gonna go from this mom with hair and he loved pulling on my hair and playing with my hair this mom with no head and so we kept him awake that night so that he like saw it happen. So it wasn't like the morning woke up and was like, what the crap happened to my mom? And I remember like, we shaved it all off. I was completely bald. And he came up to me and he rubbed my head and then he put his hands on my face. He said, mommy. And I thought, oh my gosh, he does not care what I look like. I am his mom. I am his caretaker. And I think that was the first moment I realized that in the end of the day, it does not matter look like. Each day I got to wake up to a child who didn't care. I got to wake up to a husband who loved me. I got to go to school to 10 and 11 year olds who really just cared if I made sure they got to recess on time. They didn't care what I looked like. And then the communities that gave me love and did fundraisers and that even though I would go through moments where I was truly depressed and I wasn't sure where I was going to be in a month, I'd go out to my mailbox and there'd be a package or a letter from someone, or a piece of jewelry with a very thoughtful handwritten note. I'd go into my desk and there'd be something. I'd go to my church on Sunday and there'd be somebody there with open arms wanting to care. And I just, and once again, it comes back to nobody cared that I looked, in my opinion, the very worst I'd ever looked. Each time I'd come back from a positive scan or good blood, it was like, we did it, that sounds freaky, but we did it. We're maintaining this and now, you know, I, I go to the gym or I try on new clothes and I'm like, oh, I didn't run as far as I did before. Or, oh, that doesn't fit the way. But then all of a sudden it's like this, hold on, but I'm alive. <laughs> but I have two legs that work and I have hands that work and I get to do this. I get to be a part of this world. And of course, it'll come around every six months when I do, or every few months when I do my next doctor appointment or scan. That fear will come back, but in between it just living life as though everything's good. Because every day now to me truly is a gift. I know that sounds so cliche, but it is because it I can, I can go on a hike, I can take my kids swimming, I can do everything I've wanted.